on a journey of suspense as we delve into the dark underbelly of criminal activities. It's not just about solving crimes, it's about understanding the true impact they have on our communities. The Detective, every Monday at 13 hours on Kaisho Radio 99.1, 99.5 FM. Good afternoon, Guyana, and welcome to another episode of The Detective. Um, we had a very long break, three weeks. We had two weeks of holidays, and last week we did a rebroadcast of a crime that took place in one of Guyana's interior locations. Uh, this week we recommenced. We had a late start. I have no one else to blame but myself in the traffic. I left house a little bit late. But today we want to speak about a problem that has been going on in the interior locations of Guyana for quite a while now, but only recently have the country at large been able to see or witness firsthand what goes on at these locations, especially in indigenous communities and underage girls. On Saturday, a very disturbing video was leaked after somebody got their hands on it. And after they saw what was in the video, they decided that the world needs to see this. It was very, very very disturbing but before we get into that let's just take a quick break and i will post the headline right here on the screen so that you can see what we are speaking about Yes, folks, welcome, welcome back. Now, today we're going to discuss something that has been going on. I think it's a countrywide problem. Um, but it's more prominent in the interior locations. We had this headline here. I think it was in the Sunday's newspaper. And we had it online. A very sad headline. For me, it's disturbing. I do not know how the rest of Guyana took it, but for me it was very disturbing. We hear of these things, gang rape, and these things taking place in countries like India, Africa, these impoverished nations. Yes, Guyana is, uh, has its own story that it's not a developed country, but we are developing. But there's, these are things that we have never really have much exposure on in Guyana. And it broke my heart when Kaichu News broke this story. And then I started getting calls and texts on my phone uh, by folks saying, you know, this has been an ongoing problem in interior locations, not only in Region 1, but I heard it's more prominent at Region 1 in Barmeet and so forth, whereby these underage girls, uh, they might see a guy, they like this guy, someone of their own age, and then they decide to go on a date with these guys and eventually end up getting gang raped. So, what happened on Saturday morning somebody got their hands on a video which was meant for a small group uh, for enjoyment among uh, a small group and i guess it's a, a group of uh, what we would call them pedophiles a person who liked child pornography but somehow it was directed to an individual who found it very disturbing um, based on information i have received is that there were folks who wanted to uh, get this story out there a very long time and they have been speaking about it uh, but no one was taking any action. 
But the point is, in according to the laws of Guyana, one cannot take action, especially the Guyana Police Force cannot take action unless there is some form of evidence or if there's an allegation that is made. Without someone making an allegation, without a victim, suspects cannot be charged. So this individual decided to leak this tape, very disturbing tape. And I must applaud how um, responsible they were with the dissemination of this tape. It's not the entire clip, but it was a very short video that they decided to leak. But it got its, its way into the, the right places. For example, it got its way to media. It got its way to police, and it got its way to an, a non-governmental organizations who deal with uh, these issues. And then it somehow fell in uh, to my inbox as well, saying that we need to highlight this case because this is not the first case that has occurred at a location called Port Kaituma. I opened a tape, and there, it, as was described and as I was told, it was very disturbing. There was a young, young woman, I, I re believed to be 15 years old, there she was surrounded by four guys three and one that was raping her at the time in the video they covered her face with a sheet and they held that sheet down there tightly i don't know how she survived because someone with such a sheet uh, pressed across my face i would be struggling for breath you could have heard her screaming while these guys that appeared in the video seems to be enjoying the fun and uh, they were, you know, shouting remarks that were very disturbing, supporting a man committing a criminal act, supporting him, telling him what next to do or actually directing him on what to do to this young woman. It was very disturbing. And they kept singing, singing a, 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 song, a, a, a phrase from a very popular song right now. It's called Get Them Reggie, Show Them How We Just Do It. The video was leaked. People began to in action. It, read, it, it, it fell into the police's hands. And what is even more disturbing is that although there were adult males in this video, we, we are told there were only two. Three of the suspects are juveniles, kids that are of school age. These are secondary school boys. They are juveniles themselves, and they are starting to commit criminal acts from a very young age. One might want to question why would they want to do something that is so uh, distasteful and heinous? And this is where we're going to come uh, to a very critical point. One of the child that was seen in the video is very well known in Port Kaitum. I'm told that he's only 12 years old or probably 30. What is he doing in such a, a house with big men? And this is a point that we need to discuss in our society. Are we supervising our children enough? Now, I'm going to tell you a story about this child, and I'm going to be very careful about it because juvenile are protected in Guyana. They, they are protected across the world. One needs to have care. Even if you might know who the suspect is, as long as he's under age, we need to protect him as co at all costs because he's a victim too. One might say this is not fear, but indeed this child is a victim because he could. it's clearly shown in the video that he was being influenced by adult males who should have been more responsible. This child, his father owns a lumber yard, and he was left to watch over the business. Probably peer and trusted him or whatsoever. His father opened another business at another location, and he's running that business. But this child is taking care of this business. But he's only a young, young child, and a young child with access to cash and to friends. He has... He stays by himself looking over everything, a big empty house. He has all the, con the things that he needs there. So he's living practically like an adult without any supervision. He's going to have friends. And this is where parents play a vital role. Even though your child might show some form of responsibility or might sh be, be trusted in looking after your duties, there is still that need, that guide for parental uh, supervision. Parents need to supervise these children. He's young. And I guess, I do not know if this is the facts of the matter, but based on reports, he has some very questionable friends. The friends that he keep are, are more into the dance hall music, and uh, as what I'm told, they claim to be part of a gang called Six. Now, we all know Six is a gang in Trinidad. That something, I don't know much of the history, but based on what I know, it's about seven versus six, Rastafari versus the Muslim gang. And it's, it's something that has been a problem in Trinidad for... Uh, quite some time now it's been the, the cause and the increase of crime in Trinidad with people going missing people being murdered and so forth so they claim that they're part of this gang called Six and they pledge allegiance to that gang I don't know if these are things that Six gang does but clearly 
they have been influenced because of 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 the cel- the, the artists in Trinidad who have been you know making music about these gangs. Questionable friends. I am told that some of the adults, uh, some other person that's seen in the videos, are uh, menace to society. Some of them f- steal. They break into people's place and steal and so forth. But those are the company that he had around him. They would stay there at, by him. They would, you know, uh, I'm, I've been told that sometimes they would make him buy them beers and, he, you know, uh, buy them drugs. And they would uh, drugs up and, uh, and drink and have a good time at his place. His parents just busy with the other business at another location while he's there taking care of that and going to school. And what I'm told, this might have been one of their fun activities, so-called fun, and I'm putting this in quotations, so-called fun activities, because uh, it seems that this might not have been their first victim. Another video made it its way into my inbox of them trying to uh, attempt to rape another child, uh, the same group, and this child was a male. Luckily, the child was able to fight them off. I don't know if he's acquainted with them, how he got there. But it seems as though they were, you know, having a fun time. And he, something he said offended them about video making. Based on the video that I saw, it seems that he, was, he wanted to spill the bean of what they do. And one of the guys got annoyed and said, you want to make video? Well, we can see who's going to make a video now. And they got him and they began stripping him and so forth. Somebody else was pleading with the other guy who was doing the assault to leave him alone. Now, this is the update on the case. The update is uh, that police are trying to locate the victim. We do not know who the victim is, but I'm sure she's in a traumatic state right now. I don't know if she's told her parents or what. In the video, her face cannot be seen, but it, from her uh, body structure, you could know that it was a child. It was a young woman that is not an adult as yet. Where she is, we don't know. Authorities are doing their best to locate them. Police have arrested the two juveniles. Of course, they have nowhere to go, but I'm told one of the adult males seen in the video has escaped to one of the forested locations in a mining area, in a Bakdam area. And in these areas, a Bakdam is miles away from the village or miles away from the landing or what they say. Some, it takes two, three days to travel there. I was on the phone with uh, the commander early this morning, uh, seeking an update on this case. And he told me, yes, the juveniles are in custody, but because they're juveniles, it's a multi-stakeholder approach. They're still trying to locate the victim, and police cannot question them as long as there's a victim there. And police cannot question them directly to find out the identity of the victim because there are certain organizations and other stakeholders that has to deal with them first because they're juvenile. But what I can tell you, is that when these two young men were being arrested, and I think Kaitra News posted a video of the arrest, they showed no remorse for the action. Uh, they kept saying, they, some people were even making fun uh, that they called the police Paw Patrol, little children. We all know Paw, Paw Patrol is, a, is a, uh, a child show, a cartoon for children. And these are children likening the police to Paw Patrol, although they were just seen committing a heinous act on video, on camera, the evidence is there against them. It seems as if it was something fun to, for them to do. And they kept saying, six forever. That means that they're glorifying the gang and showing the gang that they are worthy of being part of the gang. What can be done? This has been a problem across our country. Violence in school, violence in these areas. What can be done to save our youths from committing uh, criminal activities? I know the government has been doing its, uh, uh, the best it can uh, through organizations, funding organizations, and so forth. Uh, other organizations have been doing their best to take care of our children who might be school dropouts, who might not uh, be the ones to gravitate to academic level. What can be done to protect them from drugs, from bad company? How can we help them who they can choose as friends? Because definitely... And this is my personal view from watching the video. They were influenced, definitely influenced by the adult males. Probably it was one of their school friends. This girl was probably a friend from their class or they know her in school. She probably trusted them. Probably the adult males used them to lure her. We do not know until police have finished their investigation. But it is a possibility. We oftentimes look at... Uh, from the girl's point of view saying you know what we should uh protect uh the adult males from going to these school what about 
these young boys keeping adult male friends who would introduce them. We've seen uh, many scenarios on, on, on in documentaries, some in movies where, you know, adult males who are involved in criminal activities would normally recruit from the schools. In uh, Latin countries, this is the problem. They would recruit hit men and, and, and um, men to do their killings and their petty theft from schools and from depressed neighborhood. Here comes the next point that we want to touch on. Many times the police have reported that in these areas, it's more of the culture. What is true? Culture has a lot to do with it, especially indigenous community, whereby, you know, it's the culture for an unaged girl to, to marry off at a, at a young age. And some people uh, might not know that taking an underage girl for a wife is illegal. And the government has been doing its best to educate these communities. However, what was seen in this video here was very disturbing and shows that there are some folks that know what they're doing is wrong, but they choose to go ahead with it anyway. What can the government do? And these are questions as citizens listening to this program right now or persons who might be reading the news can probably suggest because the government, yes, they are policymakers, but we're a democratic country. And also, we have... Uh, ideas that we can assist our leaders in decision making these areas are not developed areas the city there's a lot of cameras um, uh, there's a lot of more access to technology investigating a crime or getting stories like these out is much easier but in these locations there's not much development port kaitim was an area where the only internet service is from digicel and it's uh, data and it doesn't work good because the area is very forested. There's not electricity for 24 hours. Yes, there is light. There's not electricity for 24 hours. And yes, these are the areas where most of the drugs and the alcohol are selling because it's a mining community. It's kind of like a mining culture. Wherever there is gold, there is uh, alcohol and there is drugs. But we have children growing up in these communities. Before, in a mining community, you would just see a few children around. But now it's become a settlement. These years have become settlement. There are people who are choosing to inhabit this community as, 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 as their home and their schools. So I think the government now has to be more proactive in protecting our youths, not only from committing crimes such as these, but also protecting persons who could become victims. There's also an influx of the migrant population there. So far, what I've been told, one individual, one female has come forward uh, with an allegation against this gang or this group that has come to this act. But according to police, they conducted a forensic interview with her, and she's not the one that was seen in the video. She has confirmed herself that she was not that particular victim. Could it be that these guys have been doing this for a while? Nevertheless, the police gave me all assurance this morning that they are trying to locate the victim because it's very evident that she needs to be located to have some kind of help. What effect has this had on her mentally? We do not know. So it's my plea through this show today to appeal if there's anybody there watching from Port Kaitumo or anybody who might have some knowledge of uh, this particular story here that occurred in Port Kaitumo. And you might have an idea who this victim could be or who victims could be. Please assist the Guyana police force in solving this case. Sometimes we have to be the eyes and ears of the Guyana police force. The police can give us protection, but they cannot solve all the crimes. Sometimes we just depend on the police to solve all the crimes and make us safe. But really and truly, it's people who solve crime because we're the ones that look out. We're the ones that are are living in the community and have the knowledge and the know-hows and who is who and, and so forth. And if you want to protect your child from being victim to something like this, because these guys are still free and, there's, and even if there's juveniles there, they need the help to rehabilitate them to become law-abiding citizens again. So we too need to play our part. So if you might have knowledge of this case, so just give the nearest police station a call. Give them what information you have. And let's play our role, not only to protect our children, but to protect the children in society, especially areas such as these mining communities where there's much influence or bad influence in the area. 
my heart goes out and I'm sure the guy guy in the heart goes out to this little girl. Um anybody who might have watched that video, I am sure that it has left some effect on them as well. Uh seen uh just one girl uh, and there is four guys there and one video in uh, the action that is taking place that is total humiliation and uh, that is something that is really really disturbing uh, if it's disturbing for someone who's looking at it imagine the person who is actually there who is actually the victim uh, we want to you know pray that those juveniles involved can be able to be rehabilitated in society and show remorse of what they've done and you know help others like themselves not to go down that road now rape has been a problem in this country and i believe this is my view this is where i differ from the police uh, there is lots of rules yes there's rules there's responsible reporting but the police does not uh, play up much with the rape they some would normally re report if they charge someone for rape sometimes there are lots of rape cases across the country and they just keep it on a down low but I think it's more time that the police start exposing these these crimes, especially rape, because it's going to continue, and especially in places where there's not much uh, resources to deal with such matters. We have a lot of unsolved rape cases that is on right now. We have uh, a Venezuelan national who was uh, raped allegedly by a doctor. That case is still unsolved. The suspect is on the run. Um, we only hope that police can catch him. Luckily, that story was exposed. Uh, we had one of the famous cases recently of a, a Venezuelan prostitute who was raped. And uh, this story was very interesting and it always remains in my mind. I can remember uh, reporters going to the scene while they were on the scene, persons who saw the brutality because apparently she broke through the window to free herself out there in the streets naked. And when people went to rescue her, uh, they... Uh, I can call him rapist now because he's behind bars for that rape. He's been granted 12 years behind bars. He would tell them, you know, she's my wife. She's my woman. And do not get in man and woman's story. And I've been hearing this a lot in the streets of Guyana, whereby when you see a woman being assaulted out there by a male and they claim to be a couple, and that sometimes we say, you know, it's not good to get in man and woman's story because blah, blah, blah. But sometimes... You don't know that a simple intervention by you could save that person's life, even if the person likes being in a toxic relationship. Luckily, that person had a friend. The, the woman was taken to the police station that evening, and they saw it as just as a normal domestic violence case. She was sent, uh, a friend contacted uh, a reporter at Kaichur News, and immediately that reporter went down to the location to, to speak with her. When uh, that reporter heard the story, he decided, you know, this is something that needs to be exposed. An investigation was launched the next day and that man was arrested. Little do we know that when the investigation unfolded, there were more victims that he had done that to. But they were just so traumatized. They were just so weak to come forward and speak about what had happened to them. Uh, neighbors too would recall and they said, well, we thought it was his girlfriends and the girlfriends were okay with these things. They would recall stories of sometime women running up the road naked and, and you know, they don't know what would be going on. They would just say, this guy is a crazy guy and he have these kind of crazy girls. But they didn't know that he was raping the women because he always had these stories. And, you know, when it comes to stories behind, between couples, Guyanese tend to sit back and say, that's none of my business. But sometimes we need to take a note of situation. Just recently, um, I witnessed something where uh, a couple was having an argument in a public space. And... Um, I intervened right away. I said, hey, you guys calm down. And the guy was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take her home and we're going to trash out our problem. Right away at the back of my mind, I said, you know what? Suppose this escalates into tension. So I did my best to calm the dude down. And I said, look, you're, 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 you're lying with me tonight. And they spent the night there. But I, I, I feel con felt confident that I did my part to protect that woman, even if she was the wrong one or he was the wrong one, whoever's the wrong from possibly being abused. So, guys, we need to be our brother's keeper in society. And some victims, especially female victims, and, and, and in these cases are less so traumatizing, you know, especially if they're caught on camera 
Uh, it's so shameful. You can you imagine you are being naked there on video or going out in the street naked? So shameful that they choose to stay silent. They're on the age sometimes they don't even tell their parents, but they live with that scars. And some some individuals are so weak that they commit suicide, and we never know why they committed suicide. We never question what happened. I'm going to tell you one story before we wrap up to show you how uh, bad and traumatic this case can be. I was told a story of a, of a young woman who uh, came from one of these areas here, but she moved uh, to another location and she had a future ahead of her. She ha had so many plans. She wanted to be this. She wanted to be that. But most importantly, she wanted to become a mother. She wanted to become a wife. But one day while going home from school, she was attacked and gang raped just like this young woman here. But it was more severe. She was left with injuries and scars that will affect her not only now, but for the rest of her life. Based on what I'm told, she had to undergo surgery. And she can never become a mother that she wanted to be. That is how tragic and brutal and cruel these crimes can be. So folks, let's just be our brothers keepers. Let's take care of our children, especially our young girls. Not even our young girls alone. Young boys as well are being assaulted these days and raped. So let's protect our children because they're the future of tomorrow. And we do not want them to be living with scars for the rest of her li for, for their lives. If you're a Christian, I want you to keep this young girl who is believed to be 15 in your prayers. Uh, if you're a Muslim, you do the same. If you're a Hindu, you do the same. Whatever you are, let's just think about this young victim right now and many more like her. And let's help police solve those unsolved cases. Put those who are uh, cold-blooded rapers behind bars. And for juveniles who might have been influenced wrongfully, let's help them to be rehabilitated in society. This is the detective saying goodbye for now until next Monday. And let us stay safe, be safe. If there's trouble nearby and you can do something to stop it, stop it. But then again, don't be reckless and jump into no cut last a knife fight because you might be end up dead. So be wise about it, but still stepping and save a life today this is the detective saying goodbye enjoy the rest of your day